Fargo Monk here. I'm back. Uh, it's a rainy day and I uh, thought I would take this time then. If I can't be out riding, why don't I do some, uh, some bike maintenance that needs to be done. And uh, one of the things in my just regular maintenance schedule, in fact I put it off a little bit longer than I should have, um, is to bleed the brakes and change out all of the uh, the brake fluid on my bike. So, uh, of course, we've got front and rear hydraulic brakes on a 2012 Suzuki V-Strom like mine. And um, I'm going to do it two different ways. On the rear brakes, it's very easy to access both the master cylinder and the caliper at the same time because they're so close to each other and they're on the same side of the bike. Uh, so I'll do one video on bleeding those brakes uh, by hand using nothing more than uh, a simple wrench on the bleeder screw and, um, uh, and just topping off the, the reservoir with fresh fluid. Uh, also, then there's the front brakes. I'm going to do a separate video on front brakes. And uh, with those, you've got two calipers, one on the right and left hand side of the front wheel. And of course, the master cylinder is on the right hand side of the handlebar. So when you're on the right hand side of the bike, you can reach the master cylinder quite easily and reach the bleeder screw quite easily. So that side of the bike will go ahead and bleed the same way as I do the rears, but on the opposite side, on the left side of the wheel, it's kind of difficult to reach over. And so for that video, I'm going to be doing the Mighty Vac uh, bleeder technique with the vacuum pump. And um, you can buy these Mighty Vacs at $50 to $75, um, or uh, Harbor Freight's got a knockoff version that's a little bit cheaper built, but I believe it works fine um, for, I think, $25, bucks, something like that. So, um, two videos. This one about rear brakes, just doing it manually, no vacuum pump. Uh, the other video will be front brakes, and that'll utilize the vacuum pump. So uh, here we go, let's, let's hit it. Okay, so uh, braking system on the rear of this bike is just like any other bike with uh, a hydraulic rear brake. You've got a master cylinder, it's hidden under this cover, so I'm gonna have to get this cover off first. And uh, a hose that comes back, you know that master cylinder is right here behind this plate. Lever presses on master cylinder, compresses the fluid, well, it doesn't compress the fluid, it's not compressible, that's the point. But uh, forces the fluid, of course, through the uh, hose and presses the piston against the caliper, squeezing the uh, brake pads together around the rotor. So, got to get this cover off and then we can access the reservoir up here uh, so I can change out the brake fluid in that reservoir. Well, here I've run into something interesting that's not really brake related, but I uh, thought I'd mention it. So I've got this Phillips head screw holding on this plastic uh, cover piece that has to be removed. And I went and grabbed my typical number two Phillips screwdriver. And when I put it in there, it fits, but it's a little loose. This is a pretty large size. It's probably JIS. Um, I don't know that for sure, but because a number two Phillips doesn't fit real snugly um, and because a number three Phillips bit does not fit in there very well. It, it does, but it's also awkward. Um, it, I'm suspecting that it's JIS. It's really tight, and I could muscle away at it and did a little bit to a point with my regular Phillips, but I'm just not getting it. And rather than strip it out, a good thing to have in your shop is a impact driver and uh, this comes with a very large Phillips bit that is not a number three and frankly it's more like a number two but it gets really big uh, and it's tough and so I will initially loosen this up with the impact driver once I've got it started there's just nothing to it. Really, really easy then. And I haven't damaged the head of that screw or bolt. Also ran into a fastener like this. And you see these things, they'll be flush mounted like this. 
And uh, the first time you run into these, uh, people sometimes don't know what to do. Um, pretty simple. You just grab a Phillips head or something small and press right in the center dot and it'll snap and that releases the tension on the sides of this thing. This is just kind of like an expansion plug of sorts and it'll pop out. Then when you want to reinstall it, you put it all the way back to here with that thing sticking out and put it in the, the hole and where it's fastening and press that in and it expands. You can feel it in your fingers. Um, you know, these things, if handled correctly, uh, are reusable over and over and over again. And if incorrectly, they will break and snap easily enough and um, your dealership sells them for far more than they cost, let's put it that way. Uh, so you can get more, but you're going to pay for it. I think these are three, three and a half, four dollars a piece. Uh, can't imagine how cheap they are to make, but anyways. So I've got the cover off and here is the rear brake. Um, brake fluid reservoir with a hose leading down to um, our master cylinder and so you know the fluid level goes all the way from right here all the way down this hose into the master cylinder and we want to bleed all of this old fluid out through the back by pressing on the lever and pumping that fluid through until we have fresh fluid well so Where's the fresh fluid? This is all old fluid. We're going to want to put fresh fluid on top, and but you know obviously there's going to be some dilution with old fluid if we do that. So let's remove as much of the old fluid before we start with the new fluid as we possibly can. And so we're going to empty this thing out, but I want to be careful that I don't empty it so much to the point that um, you know you you always want to have fluid in here when you're pumping the brake because if you don't well then you're pulling air into the system and air is compressible uh, like any gas and that means brake fade and uh, bad brakes so um, I'll drain this down as far as I can see right to the bottom and at that point then I'm just gonna have to be um, watching the amount of fluid that I pull out of the system and be assured that I've purged all of the old fluid and and that's something you just have to have kind of a sense for um, you have to have a sense for the volume that's in this hose in the master cylinder itself and then in the hose all the way back and don't forget inside of the um, caliper piston also right right behind that piston there's a you know significant volume of fluid especially given the fact that uh, these brakes are a bit worn and that raises another point is while I'm doing this and since these brake pads are still good but worn quite a bit uh, you know as you can see they've worn enough to drop the fluid from full down to here um, why don't I go ahead and change the brake pads and press that fluid back up into the system so I'm getting as much of the old fluid removed from the system as I possibly can uh, before I start this so I'm gonna do that first is, is press that back and that means taking the caliper off, so we'll do that next. So I'm back here at the rear caliper, and I need to remove this caliper. And on this particular bike, I've got a 12 millimeter and a 14 millimeter bolts there. So we'll start with the 14. A little bit better leverage on it with an extension to the ratchet. loose and the 12 and that's loose being careful to keep all these components clean as I pull them out because there are sliders here everything's lubricated with uh, Looks like silicone grease, which would make sense. 
And I just carefully, let's see, have I got spacers here that are gonna fall out? No, we're good. So I'm just gonna carefully remove this and pull it up off the rotor. There are my pads riding inside on that pin. So you can see the amount of travel that that piston, caliper piston, has moved out. And what I want to do is press that back in. You can also see that I don't have a whole lot of material left on these pads. So while I'm here, we're going to go ahead and change these out. Okay, so to remove these calipers, this pin needs to be removed. And that is a simple screwdriver. Choose your screwdriver very carefully. You want something that fits the entire head of that. This is a nice fit. It's not that tight. I can just back that out carefully. Has a uh, six millimeter hex by Allen key to it. Let me grab that real quick. I think that's six millimeter. Yeah. Oh wait, five millimeter. Never mind. And that is pretty tight, so there we go. Right now, I want to remove the inside brake pad, but I'm going to leave the outside pad there. If I were leaving, if I were just changing the hydraulic fluid and not the pads, I would not do this next step the way I'm doing it. But since this pad is a throwaway anyways, I'm going to use it to press against that caliper or uh, the piston in the caliper and force that fluid back into the brake reservoir. The other thing I need to mention is that the reservoir, I have loosened the top. So as I compress this piston together, forcing the fluid back up the hose and back into the reservoir, I don't have the top of the reservoir pinned down. So the air that's at the top of that reservoir has a way to escape. The other thing I'm going to do, just because cosmetics matters a little bit, is grab a little piece of cardboard or paper, just put that between my C-clamp and this nice painted surface where it says uh, Nissan brand of the... And this all gets to be kind of a nice little dance with your hands. There we go. So now I'm just very slowly applying pressure to this. And as I'm doing it, the fluid, I can see the fluid level going up in the uh, fluid reservoir, which you can't see right now. And the top is actually rising up off of the, as the gases escape. I'm gonna pull that lid off. You want to be careful with brake fluid that you don't uh, spill it on painted components. So I'm watching that level carefully because I do not want it on my paint. If it looks like I'm going to exceed the capacity of the reservoir, I am going to stop and pull some out. So carefully watching that. There, I can feel the, and I'm very gentle with it, the um, piston has hit uh, you know, all the way to the back side of the, the inside of the caliper itself, and 
right, so that's as far as that's going to go. Time to take these pads out completely. So the time to figure out that you have the correct pads is, you know, before you open the package. That's a match. Now these pads that I pulled off the bike have uh, a backing plate on them, and you don't want to toss that out with the old um, with the old pads. You want to uh, install those on the new pads. They help eliminate brake chatter and noise. And some guys, after they get these uh, anti-chatter plates off, will try to put some kind of a um, anti-squeal, you know, brake lubricant on the back side of the pads. I've not really ever found that that's more effective than just simply reusing these plates, uh, both on motorcycle and automotive applications but you know I'm sure some guys have different opinion with me but I don't have noisy brakes and they certainly don't have anything to do with uh, you know, how well they work at least in an application for regular street use there is this little um, I don't know what the material is that it's made of it looks like plastic but it isn't I doubt it is it, it seems like some kind of a carbon compound, but um, keep those in there. So reinstall those on your new pads. And now we can go put those into the calipers. So one of the ways to help position these in the caliper correctly is you've got this backing plate which still has the marks from this side of the caliper on it. And this one has the round circle from the caliper piston. So right there, I know my orientation is like this. And of course, the pin has got to go through there. So I can't go wrong with getting them installed in the correct orientation if I pay attention to those little cues. I'm just going to tighten this up off camera and try to save some time here.